Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to welcome to today's uh, PNS lecture. Um, uh, it's it's PNS DRAM Bounder lecture. Uh, today I will talk about our recent HPCA paper um, called "Spatial Variation Aware Read Disturbance Defenses: Experimental Analysis of Real DRAM Chips and Applications on Future Solutions." My name is Dirai, uh, the first name here, and uh, yeah, I'll just talk about this paper today, uh, and I'll try to keep it short. So uh, let me just quickly get rid of this. Maybe I should just hide. No, I will not hide. Okay. So uh, I will start with talking about a lack of memory isolation. So uh, let's say you have this memory uh, uh, shown as a rectangle here as a, in a cartoonish way. You have uh, access to a certain location in this memory and uh, something happens that so, some bit changes in another region that you didn't access. So this is something you definitely do not want to have in your system because it can uh, cause data loss or corruption. It can compromise your application's correctness. It can be used or exploited to uh, leak private information, and it can be even used for taking over your computer. Um, therefore, uh, we have this principle. Uh, it's a building block uh, for the system security and privacy called memory isolation. Basically, this principle says that an access to one memory address should not have unintended side effects on data stored in other addresses. Okay. So memory isolation is difficult in uh, modern memory chips, and uh, here is it. Here, here is why. So this is a picture of DRAM module. If you have them. Um, in this DRAM modules, uh, the dynamic random access memory modules uh, that are used mainly for main memories, there is this uh, uh, phenomenon called read disturbance. So you read a location of this memory, and then it can disturb uh, the bits stored in other uh, regions of the same chip, and uh, you can observe some bit flips uh, based on these uh, reads uh, to other addresses. So reading from a memory location can disturb uh, data physically nearby to the address that you're accessing. So here is uh, another uh, uh, illustration of DRAM read disturbance uh, vulnerability. And um, uh, a prime example of it is raw hammer. So in this scenario, uh, let's say we want to access data uh, stored in this, uh, this region that, that is called DRAM row 2. Uh, you first need to open this row and then fetch its data into a row buffer structure. And uh, uh, when this, uh, uh, so when when you access data in row two, and then you you're done with that, and you access you want to access data in other rows, you you first need to close this and then open other rows. So the thing is, if you keep doing this open and close operations many times, uh, targeting the same row then you can uh, cause bit flips in physically adjacent rows. And this is actually effectively used to break memory isolation. Um, here's another example uh, that is called raw press that is recently discovered last year. So here, uh, what you do is you, you open row two to access data, and then you just leave this row open uh, for a very long time. And you don't even need to repeat close open operations many times, and you observe bit flips in the nearby rows. And this is also used in combination with raw hammer to uh, break memory isolation. Um, so uh, in this work, uh, we we want to uh, basically reduce the um, performance overheads of the existing solutions against uh, read disturbance vulnerability. So uh, to do that, we do some sort of characterization and uh, uh, and then we build on top of that to improve our uh, mechanisms. And uh, here is a, a high level observation that we had uh, over years. So uh, to induce a read disturbance bit flip, uh, you need to access rows uh, for a certain number of times. And um, 
assume that this gray rectangle identifies or shows all, all your DRAM rows um, for a very small fraction of rows. Uh, less than 10,000 activations is enough to uh, induce a bit flow. And for the vast majority, you need to access them between 10,000 and 100,000 times. And for, again, a small fraction, you, you might need to um, activate them, access them many, many more times than 100K and uh, so that you can get Bitphillips. And this is this is what we call as spatial variation in read disturbance vulnerability across DRAM rows. So basically not all rows are uh, equally vulnerable to read disturbance. Uh, but here is the thing, the existing read disturbance solutions are configured for the worst case row. And uh, since not all rows need the same level of uh, protection, uh, read Existing read disturbance solutions actually overshoot and incur large performance overheads due to overprotecting many rows. So, with this uh, quick background, um, I'd like to give you an executive summary. So, our goal in this work is to understand the spatial variation of read disturbance across DRAM rows and leverage this understanding to improve existing solutions. Um, in this work, we conduct an experimental study on 144 DDR4 DRAM chips from three major manufacturers. And we characterize all rows in a bank and four banks in each chip. Um, our main takeaway is that read disturbance vulnerability significantly and irregularly varies across DRAM rows. Uh, to leverage this takeaway, uh, we propose a new mechanism called SWERT. SWERT is the abbreviation for spatial variation aware read disturbance defenses. Uh, Sever dynamically tunes uh, solutions aggressiveness. Basically, it performs uh, preventive actions such as refreshes more or less frequently uh, based on the victim rose vulnerability. <clears throat> uh, we implement Sever uh, either in the memory control or in the DRAM chip, uh, basically wherever it is needed, uh, wherever the uh, read disturbance solution is implemented. And uh, we evaluate SWERT. Uh, we show that it significantly reduces the existing read disturbance solutions performance overheads and significantly improves system performance by doing so. So let's go with the motivation. Um, over the years, we have some significant uh, technology not scaling in DRAM technology that causes DRAM cells to uh, get smaller and also get closer to each other. And as a result, when we look at the read disturbance vulnerability, we observe that the minimum activation count you need to achieve, you need to reach to uh, induce a bit fill-up, uh, has reduced uh, more than two orders of magnitude in, in, in the last decade. So DRAM chips are increasing the more vulnerable to read disturbance with technology not scaling. So DRAM read disturbance worsens as DRAM chip density increases, and existing solutions become more aggressive to cope with that. Basically, they need to perform preventive actions more frequently and uh, more aggressively. Uh, <clears throat> and since they also overprotect many rows, uh, their performance overheads significantly increase. So the question is, can we leverage the variation in read disturbance vulnerability across DRAM rows? Um, and we want to do that for reducing the performance overhead. Okay, uh, so the problem is that no prior work regards the studies, uh, spatial variation of DRAM rate disturbance across all DRAM rows, and uh, its variation, its implications on future solutions. So our goal in the study is to empirically understand the spatial variation rate disturbance across DRAM rows, and leverage this understanding to improve the uh, existing solutions and reduce their performance overheads. So to uh, conduct this study, we use uh, a DRAM bander uh, based setup. Uh, this is very similar to what the students in this PNS course uh, keep using this semester. Uh, so basically we have a Alvo U200 uh, FPGA board program with DRAM bander. And uh, we, we plug a DRAM module, DDR4 DRAM module, um, uh, and clamp it with uh, heaters on both sides. And uh, we also have a temperature controller that controls the temperature with high accuracy uh, on this DRAM chip. Um, this board is connected to a, a host PC uh, through PCIe. So we, uh, we uh, prepare a test program from the host PC, offload it to the FPGA board and FPGA board 
uh, has a very fine grain control over the DRAM commands, timing parameters, and temperatures uh, that we test uh, this DRAM chiplet. And uh, we basically write data, uh, perform our uh, tests, read back the data, and analyze the bit curves. Um, okay, so we test 144 DDR4 DRAM chips uh, from uh, three major manufacturers that are specified here. So uh, these chips implement different uh, densities, die divisions, chip organization, and they are from different manufacturing rates. Uh, so our main takeaway is that read disturbance vulnerable to very significant and irregularly across DRAM rows. And here is a little bit data to back it up. So here, uh, what we look at is a histogram. Uh, on the x-axis of this histogram, we have the minimum hammer count to induce the first bit flip. And on the y-axis, we have the fraction of DRAM rows. Uh, different colors identify data from different modules. Um, and all the modules are from a single manufacturer, Samsung. And um, we uh, show the uh, variation in this histogram across banks with error bars. <clears throat> And uh, so among these five modules, 12,000 is the minimum uh, uh, row hammer threshold that we observed, or HC first value. And uh, when we look at the variation or the range of this HC first value uh, across different DRAM rows, we observe that it significantly changes and it goes from 12,000 up to 120,000. So the minimum hammer count in this first bit of significant varies across rows in a DRAM bank. And when we look at the same data uh, across different modules from three major manufacturers, we observe that it's it's the same story. It significantly varies. So in the full paper that is available in this archive link, uh, we have the uh, we have detailed uh, results for each of these modules and the full references to these modules data sheets. Um, okay, so uh, next we look at the regularity and spatial variation of read disturbance across DRAM rows. <clears throat> on the x-axis, now we look at the DRAM row address. And on the y-axis, we look at the minimum hammer count to induce the first bit flip. So here is the data from a module from Hynix, uh, SA Hynix. And uh, as you see, we do not observe any uh, any regular visibility, uh, any visible regularity um, in the data of this module. Um, so uh, we we just conclude based on this that uh, the the first bit flip to uh, in sorry the the hammer count to induce the first bit flip is regularly varies across different DRAM rows, and. Uh, we observe some similar stories uh, across different modules. This is one from Micron. This is another one from Samsung. So there is no real uh, material. There, there is no visible trend, basically. Um, we also look at the predictability of read disturbance vulnerability to conduct some statistics, statistical analysis on top of this eyeball observations. Um, so uh, uh, we look at the predictability of read disturbance vulnerability across um, uh, rows uh, based on the rows spatial features. Uh, so as spatial features, we look at the bank address bits, subarray address bits, row address bits, and rows distance to the local row buffer. So uh, in this uh, study, we follow the following methodology. We cluster DRAM rows into 15 different bins based on each row's minimum hammer count to induce the first bit flip. And we predict whether a row is in a cluster or not based on each spatial feature. And we measure the F1 score of these predictions. And we observe that uh, only a few of these features uh, can provide the F1 score larger than 0 0.7, which is like somewhat significant prediction accuracy. Um, but it's only from manufacturer as Samsung. So <clears throat> error spatial features are not really good predictors for the rose with disturbance vulnerability. Uh, therefore, we conclude that read disturbance vulnerable to very significant land irregularly across the RAM rows. Uh, there are more details about the characterization study and more data available in the paper. You can check it on the archive version. Um, 
next we propose a new uh, mechanism called SWERT. So I'll uh, just repeat the key experimental takeaway, which is predisturbance vulnerability very significant and irregularly across DRAM rows. And our key idea is to leverage the variation predisturbance vulnerability across DRAM rows. And uh, to this end, we propose a new mechanism called SWERT, spatial variation of predisturbance defenses. Uh, SWERT dynamically tunes the aggressiveness of existing solutions to the victim rows predisturbance vulnerability. And swear uh, turns out to be a Swedish word uh, that is for sword. And the, the, therefore, we have um, the Godric Gryffindor's uh, sword uh, on the on the right hand side of the slide. Uh, so uh, essentially, sword performs fewer preventive actions, such as refreshes for rows that are less vulnerable to read disturbance. And uh, by doing so, it reduces the performance or heads of existing solutions. Here's an example of how we integrate SWERT with an existing solution. So here we look at paraprobable straw activation. This is an existing solution that is proposed in ISCA 14. So uh, let me uh, remind you with what uh, this mechanism does. So when a row activation happens, para uh, generates a random number and compares this random number against a predefined threshold. And if the random number is larger than this threshold, it preventively refreshes the victim row. And if it is not, then it does not uh, preventively refresh the victim row. And um, when we integrate this mechanism with SWERT, we basically provide the victim row address to SWERT. And SWERT dynamically changes the threshold value so that um, if the victim row is less vulnerable to row hammer, then uh, SWERT applies a higher threshold and it causes fewer refresh operations. And if victim row is highly vulnerable to row hammer, then SWERT applies a lower threshold and you will have more aggressive refresh uh, operations performed. So SWERT dynamically tunes per threshold to the victim row's vulnerability this way. Uh, so we in the paper, we uh, explain the Excuse me. Uh, in the paper, we explain SWERT's integration to many redisturbance solutions. That includes uh, Blockhammer, Hydra, RRS, and Aqua that are proposed in the recent years. Um, so a little bit more detail. Uh, uh, this is our implementation details of SWERT. SWERT classifies the RAM rows into several vulnerability bins. In our case, this is uh, 16 different bins. So we use four bits uh, to identify a DRAM row's uh, location or classification across these bins. Um, so we implement uh, SWERT where the redisturbance solution is. Redisturbance solutions can be in the memory controller, uh, such as uh, the mechanisms that uh, I already mentioned, um, or it can be an DRAM implementation as well. So if the uh, redisturbance mechanism is uh, mitigation mechanism is in the memory controller, then we need to maintain the metadata, which is uh, around four bits per DRAM row, in, somewhere in the memory controller. So it can be an SRAM table in the memory controller. It can also be stored in uh, among the data integrity bits inside the DRAM chip. So whenever you read data, you fetch that information as well, uh, along with that data. And uh, you can do uh, things like that. And there are some other options as well. You can store these bits uh, inside the DRAM chip and cache them in the memory controller as well. So there are different implementation methods. We discuss all these in detail in the paper. I will not go over uh, every single uh, of them. Um, so uh, about the DRAM implementation, uh, uh, we can basically store this metadata, which is like four bits per DRAM row within each DRAM row. Uh, meaning like uh, each DRAM row is typically like 8 kilobytes and you only add, append some 4 bits next to that 8 kilobytes. So this is very uh, low overhead. And you can also keep them in a separate DRAM array within the same DRAM chip, basically. Um, there are mechanisms that already uh, proposes this and, um, and explores the uh, costs and they are quite feasible implementations. So you can find more details about this in the in the archive version of the paper, uh, but I will move on to uh, performance evaluation uh, with this. So uh, to evaluate performance impact of SWERT, we uh, conduct some cycle level simulations using Revolator 2.0. Uh, 
and uh, we simulate this system that uh, that is uh, quite realistic. And uh, we uh, simulate the system with 120 different eight core multi program workloads. And these are these workloads are coming from CPEC 2006 2017 TPC Media Bench and YCSP Benchmark Suits. So we integrate SWART separately with Aqua, Blue Camera, Para, Hydra, and RRS, and uh, we observe its improvement on top of these mechanisms. Uh, in the study, we sweep the HC first, which is the minimum hammer count to minimum hammer count needed to induce the first bit flip from 4096 down to 64 hammers. Um, here is the result of Para. On the x-axis, we look at the minimum hammer count to induce the first bit flip, and on the y-axis, we look at the system throughput in, in terms of weighted speed up. Um, and everything is normalized to the uh, baseline where there is no mitigation. So uh, this purple curve shows the system throughput for PARA. As you see, uh, as we go forward for uh, lower raw hammer thresholds, meaning like uh, more vulnerable DRAM chips, uh, we have more significant performance overheads. And uh, uh, we combine or integrate SWERT with PARA by using uh, three different vulnerability profiles that we gather from real DRAM chips. And uh, we project the performance overhead like this. And uh, this is the result uh, for SWERT's implementation with a, um, a vulnerability profile from a high next module. This is from a micro module, and this is from a Samsung module. So uh, we clearly see significant improvement in the system throughput and uh, reduction in the performance overhead of uh, the uh, 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 read to service mitigation mechanism. And when we look at the performance results similar way in, in other uh, uh, mitigation mechanisms, we uh, observe that uh, SWART significantly reduces their performance overhead and provides a uh, much higher uh, uh, system throughput uh, by doing so. We have more, many more details in the paper. We look at the bitter rate variation across rows, uh, the redistribution bitter rate variation across rows. Um, we look at uh, the spatial variation of row press, again, across the RAM rows. Uh, we provide uh, details of our experiments and we provide algorithms uh, uh, of our uh, test routines as well. Um, so we reverse engineer uh, subarray boundaries uh, to gather some spatial features and um, it's by itself a, is a, a, a good contribution. Uh, so it's also available in the paper. And uh, <clears throat> we also discuss various memory control based on, on DRAM DI implementations. We um, we also uh, analyzed the hardware complexity of SWERT uh, and uh, for both memory controller and DRAM based implementations and showed that it's it's quite lightweight and it doesn't have any additional latency overhead. Uh, so we provide a preliminary analysis of the effect of aging of DRAM read disturbance vulnerability as well to understand if we need to keep reprofiling DRAM chips to use them for SWERT. And it turns out that there is some, um, so this is a preliminary analysis really, this is not really a rigorous aging study, but we observe that the um, raw hammer threshold of a given DRAM row can change from time to time. So it, it actually necessitates that we need to uh, have some uh, lightweight, uh, fast online profiling, uh, online profiling methods, methodologies. Okay, uh, all these are in the in the archive version of the paper, so this is the link. And in conclusion, uh, this is the first rigorous experimental study on the spatial variation of DRAM read disturbance across DRAM rows. Uh, in this study, we tested 144 DVR4 DRAM chips from three major manufacturers, and we characterized all rows in a bank and four banks in a DRAM chip. And we conclude that read disturbance vulnerability significantly and irregularly varies across DRAM rows. And uh, to leverage this observation, we propose this new uh, mechanism called SWERT, Spatial Variation Aware Read Disturbance Defenses. SWERT dynamically tunes a solution's aggressiveness, uh, basically performs more or less refresh operations based on the victim role's vulnerability to DRAM read disturbance. 
And it's implemented either in the memory controller or in the DRAM chip, depending on where the existing read disturbance solution is implemented. And it significantly reduces the performance overhead of existing solutions, so improves the system throughput. Um, we mm -hmm. hope and expect that SWERT may present itself to any worthy read disturbance solution. And uh, this is the end of my talk. I'm not sure if we have online attendees here. Uh, so I I will quickly check YouTube chat in case there is any um, question. Okay, I do not see any. But feel free to uh, reach out to me. And uh, also, uh, yeah, oh, you can just send me an email and ask questions if you have. And uh, I'm open to discuss this. And uh, here's the QR code for the full paper. Thanks for attending and listening to this talk. Uh, yeah, see you in the next talk.